All this week, Denver 7 is looking back on the devastating floods a decade ago in northern Colorado. Still uh, difficult to see mm -hmm. some of the images from then and hard to imagine now, but some places were completely cut off. You have uh, communities like Estes Park, which was completely cut off for almost two weeks. Um, no trucks getting in or out. I mean, because you had 7, 36, and 34 all closed. Um, uh, and small towns like Pinewood Springs were completely isolated. A logistical nightmare. Then Governor Hickenlooper said CDOT would have all roads open by Thanksgiving that year. They did that, but permanent repairs took nine more years and there was a new goal of resiliency. Everything we built in the permanent, re in the permanent repairs was based off the idea that if we put it back the way it was before, it's just gonna get washed out again. What can we do? to make this not happen. The focus was on making sure that our roadways had at least one lane that was gonna, once the waters receded, that one lane at least would be available. There's going to be a passable lane to get people out and to get first responders in. So CDOT had to innovate to make this happen. They developed a new way to create bedrock where there was none. They kept track of that, and now CDOT is helping other states when they have floods, like Kentucky a few months ago. They reached out to us, and the whole idea was, here's the paperwork, here's the forms. If this, if this can reduce your stress by 10%, then that's going to be better for everybody. And so a lot of these lessons learned have been used all over the nation, and our resiliency program that we've created here has kind of become the standard for programs throughout the nation. You can learn more about CDOT's recovery work in its new documentary called The Road to Resiliency, available on YouTube.